In this tutorial, we're going to look at a website that is still in beta, but I'm really excited about this thing. It's called thelearnia.com. I think that's how you pronounce it. Kind of rhymes with hernia. But anyway, thelearnia.com is a pretty exciting tool, I think, for teachers and students, but especially for teachers. And the purpose of it is to help you create awesome video lessons in minutes. Now, instantly, some of you will think of similar tools such as EduCreations or maybe Lenso or Lensu, depending on how you pronounce that. And those tools are similar to this one. However, in most cases, I think people use those other two tools on an iPad. Although Although it may be possible to use them on a desktop computer or a laptop as well. But the Learnia seems to be focused on creating awesome video lessons from a desktop or laptop computer or Chromebook. To get started using this tool, simply go to thelearnia.com and when you get there, you can sign up for an account by clicking here and clicking register and then filling in some information. You could certainly do it that way or you can sign in with one of these other accounts. And that's helpful for people who work with younger students. If your students have an Edmodo account or let's say a Google Plus account, they can just sign in using those accounts. So I'll go ahead and click on Google. I'll choose my Google account and allow that connection between Google and thelearnia.com. And now I am signed in. Now I did have to refresh the page for it to show my name here in the corner and here and show that it recognizes me. But now I'm in and ready to use the website. If you browse down the page a little bit, it shows you the steps. First, you should plan your lesson. Collect things like PowerPoint presentations, photos, drawings, images, things like that. Next, you record your voice and any instructions, any narration that you want to put into your project. And then the third step is to share your finished lesson. So let's get started creating a lesson. I'm going to click here on Create Lesson. You can also click up here or even down here. But I'll just click Create Lesson and it loads up the Learnia interface that I can use to make my lesson. Step one, I need to decide how I'm going to go about creating the lesson. Do I want to work from a pre-made template that the Learnia has created? Do I want to upload a file of my own? Or do I want to just use a blank whiteboard basically and then start from scratch? Let's get a glimpse of each of these. I'm going to click select template and it brings up a bunch of templates that I can use. I'm sure that more will be added in the future. But if you like a style or a look here and you would like to use it yourself, you just click on it and it will load the template in and you'll be able to use it. Now that that's loaded, you can see here at the right, I have slide one, slide two, and so forth. And there's some template photos that have been included and text that's been included. And I could just double click on that and change the text. I could click on the photo and replace it with a photo of my own that I might want to include. And I'll show you how to do this in more detail a little bit later. So that is one of your options. You can just use a pre-made template and then adapt it to your own uses. The third option here is to use a blank canvas that you use from scratch. You build your project from scratch. So this is a glimpse of that. And you would have to use the tools here at the left to add every element that you might want to use in your lesson. And this really is a great option, but I'm going to go leave that project and I'll create yet another lesson. This is the one that I'm really going to develop while you're watching. I'm going to click the second option here, upload file. I can go ahead and click start and this allows me to upload PowerPoint presentations. I think most teachers have PowerPoint presentations on their computers that they've been using for years. And of course, maybe we've updated them and added them to Google Slides or to Prezi or some other presentation tool. But most of us probably still have some good PowerPoints that we've used. Well, you can just click upload file and then find one of those old PowerPoints. Click open and it's going to load in this PowerPoint and make it available to me to use. Now notice what it says here. Due to your computer processing power limitations, we will only import a maximum of 15 slides. So it might cut off part of my presentation. In this case, it looks like my whole presentation was accepted in. And wow, this PowerPoint that it imported, I probably made in 2004, 2005. It's, it's pretty old and you can see the background and some of the font options and things uh, look very much dated. But this is now part of my Learnia project. And I can just click on the right to go from slide to slide and get ready to teach this. 
Now, as you can see, it is a little bit editable. I can move my PowerPoint slides, resize them if I need to, but the content itself is pretty well locked in because it came this way from PowerPoint. So let's say I would like to use this old PowerPoint presentation as the basis of my lesson. And I want to explain this subject of verb conjugation in Spanish in the present tense and have a lesson that I can share with people that maybe couldn't come to school today or I could even post it on my website. So in order to do that, all I have to do is go up to the top and click start recording. And it's going to ask for permission to access my microphone. And it's very important to click allow. Now I'm using Google Chrome. If you use a different browser, this permission pop-up might look a little different. It might be a bar across the top or across the bottom, or it just might have some other look to it. So just be aware of that, but look around for this permission box and you need to allow access to your mic. Hi students, we're gonna learn about verb conjugation in Spanish in the present tense. And we're gonna focus on AR verbs today. So as you can see here, it says AR verbs. Now I'm stepping out of the teacher role for a minute and I want you to notice that my mouse it has a yellow ball with it and this just makes it so that as you are teaching the students know where you want them to look. Okay, And you can also move things with that. If you click and hold you can move elements of the screen around. Okay back to being a teacher. So let's get started learning AR verbs. As an aside I just clicked here on slide number two. It brought up the next slide and here's my wonderful second slide with way too much text on it. Now on this second slide, in addition to talking and narrating and describing what's on the slide, I can do some things like use a pen here at the left. I can underline with that pen and notice that there are different colors I can choose. There's yellow and uh, all sorts of colors, a color wheel in fact, that I can choose from to select the color that I would like. Now, let's say instead of crossing out that word, what if I wanted to highlight it, like with a highlighter marker? What I would do is I would go up here, and you can see that there are different widths for this pen. Okay, so if I go to the biggest, thickest width, now it's more like a highlighter. Okay, so infinitives. Now, of course, I could go back up to move, and I could move some of these elements. Okay, if I can get that marker just right, so I could move that out of the way. Okay, and then move that back. So this is basically giving me a telestrator or a marker that I can use to draw on my presentation while I'm talking so the students know exactly what I'm talking about, hopefully anyway. So here on the third slide, let's move on to that. So when translated to English, all infinitives mean to something. And here are some examples. Now, if you ever make a mistake like I just did, I meant to highlight this. Instead, I crossed it out. You can just go up here, click the undo button in the upper right corner, and it takes it out. Okay, so here are some examples. Estudiar, vivir, pasar, and planear. Now, a couple of other things that you should know about. You can also add text. You can select text, click on the screen, and then type. Now it looks like it's giving me a very small text box, but you can make it bigger if you need to. And I'll just add another example here. Maybe I want five examples instead of the four that I had in my original PowerPoint. I can just type that in and then go back up to move and then I can put that word where I want it to be. So even though that word wasn't in the original PowerPoint, it's now part of my lesson. You can also add shapes. There are squares, there are circles, triangles, lots of different shapes that you can bring in, which of course would be very useful in a math class, in a geometry class, things like that. You can also put in straight lines. Okay, and again, with all of this, you can change the colors if you want to use a different color. And then finally, notice that you can also add images. If you click on images, it takes you to a screen where you can pull in some basic free images that the Learnia provides. And these are basically things like buttons, you've got clouds, you've got plus signs, other shapes like hearts, things like that. A lot of these are education related, but others are kind of interface related like buttons would be. Okay, so those are free images that just come with the Learnia. And you can search through those. I could type in something like button, and then it gives me some examples there. There's also different uh, folders, so you can go to the chemistry folder, you could go to the graphs folder, infographics, just some really nice free images that come with the Learnia.com. You can also click search on the web. So for example, if I need a picture of something like drawing, let's say I wanna teach the word dibujar, which means to draw. 
I type in drawing and it has some fun examples. Maybe I select that one, click add images, and that picture is brought into my lesson. The picture is kind of big, but I can just use the corner to click and drag to make it smaller, just like you're probably used to doing in other presentation tools. So there's that. And also notice what happened. When I clicked images to go to the image interface, something happened to my lesson. Down here it says, recording is paused. Please click the record button to resume recording. So basically, you can see it's stopped here at 7.01, and I can just click again to resume the recording. And now I can talk about this image that I put in, I can move it around, and all of this is being recorded. What I say, what I highlight, what I move, what I add, everything is being recorded as part of this lesson. I do want to show you a couple of other image options that you have. There are some backgrounds that you can pull in. Okay, now these would replace your PowerPoint background. So in this case, I don't want to do this. But if you do, you would just select the background that you want and click Set Background. I'm going to cancel that. And then the last option is to upload images. That way you're not relying on an image search. You're not relying on the free images that come with thelearnia.com. You can just upload images that you have taken with your camera or that are on your computer. Okay, so I can select this image of an elephant. It brings it in and now I can resume my recording. So really, those are all of the options that you really need to know in order to be able to create using the Learnia. Now, I do want you to notice a few other bonus ones, but really, after watching what I've just shown you, you have what you need to start using the Learnia. The last few bonus tips that I have for you are you can click on a picture or anything really and go up here to the top and flip the picture. So this will flip it horizontally. This will flip it vertically. You can also change what is on top of what. So right now, the elephant is covering up everything else behind it except for the word practicar. So if I want to change that, I can just go up here and I can click this button here and it will push the elephant back into the background. Okay, so you can play around with that, but most of the elements that you see here in my lesson can be moved either forward or backward in front of or behind the other elements. Okay, the last things that you need to know before we save this lesson and get ready to share it with students is you'll find some things up here at the top of the screen. Don't click this button here. What that does is it erases your lesson and you start over from scratch. So don't click that unless you need to restart. We also have some cursor tracking, so you'll notice that my mouse is followed by this yellow circle. If I click that, it goes away. We have the pause recording and resume recording and all of that that you've seen throughout this presentation. And then we also have an option to mute the audio. So if you don't want your voice recorded, you could try clicking that button and see what it does. Now that I'm done with my lesson and it's awesome and it's ready for students to watch and, and their parents to watch, this is just a, a masterpiece really. I'm gonna go up here and I'll click preview save. I click that button and it generates a preview of my lesson. It combines all of the elements, the screen recording, my voice, all of that. Verb conjugation in Spanish in the present tense. So there we have my wonderful lesson in preview form. Down here at the bottom it says, looks good. Are you happy with it? If so, click save. If I'm not happy, click start over. So I am happy with that. I'll click save lesson. At this point, I need to enter the name of the lesson, my email address, my name, and then I can put in some tags like Spanish, comma, AR verbs, and I, I can put in tags to help other people find it. Then I simply click publish, and this lesson now will be saved online in my lessons. Now, some of you at this point are probably saying, this is nice, but I wish I could edit out my mistakes. I wanna edit out the word um or uh. You know, what if I say something wrong? Uh, I wanna be able to edit that out. Well, that's not really what the Learnia is for. It's not an editing tool. You don't get to go back and edit mistakes. Just correct your mistakes in your lesson, just like you do when you teach in person. When you're teaching your students in person, you make mistakes all the time, right? But you simply correct those and you get back to the lesson. And so this is just the same as that. I would say just, you know, don't be too much of a perfectionist. So this part does take a little while, especially because my lesson is about 12 minutes in length. And you might have noticed when I clicked to record, I got a countdown at the top of the screen, a 15 minute countdown. That's because you are limited to 15 minute lessons. 
Now, if that distresses you and you wish you had more than 15 minutes, don't worry. Just make a second lesson. So you can split your lessons into part one, part two, part three, but each segment of your lesson can be no longer than 15 minutes. So anyway, let's give this some time to finish processing the audio and combining the different elements of my lesson, and then I'll show you where it goes and how to share it with others. Okay, so there it is. It's finished processing the audio and the rest of the lesson. At this point, I can watch it through, but more importantly, I think I can share it. So here in the upper left, there's a share button that I can click. It has easy links to share it to Facebook, Pinterest, Google+, Twitter, Tumblr, and we can also just email it. And in a lot of cases, that's the best option. If you just click email, you can say who it's from, who it's to. You can even send a copy to yourself and then click send. And that will give whoever you send it to the URL to your video lesson that you've made in the Learnia. Now I'm gonna close that and show you that there's also an option to embed your lesson. If you click this embed link, you can highlight and copy that embed code, and then you could put that in to another website, something like Weebly. You could try it in Canvas or another LMS like Blackboard, and then your video lesson should appear embedded into those websites. Okay, so a couple of really great options. I really think embedding it and emailing the link or copying and pasting the link, those really are the best, I think, ways to share your finished lessons. So now I can go back to thelearnia.com and I can create a new lesson. I can just close out if I want to. Whatever I want to do, that lesson I've made is saved and stored in my account. And I can see that and get back to it anytime by going here to the top where it says hello and I click on the little arrow and then it says my lessons. I click on my lessons and it should list all of the lessons that I've created. Now just so you know, once you have processed the audio and pulled together all the elements of your project so that you can publish it, at that point I don't believe it's editable. So you'll notice that this one that I finished does not seem to have an edit button, while this other one that I'm working on but haven't really finalized, this one does have an edit button and I can get in and make some changes. So just be aware of that. So really, I'm pretty excited about thelearnia.com. I think it's a really promising tool. It's a completely free, very useful and helpful tool for teachers and for students. So thanks for watching, and I hope that you'll consider connecting with me on some of my social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students, and watch for a new video from me at least every Monday.